The South African Academy of Engineering is urging government to focus on what it terms securing reliable hydrological information to manage South Africa's scarce water resources. In an advisory note written to President Ramaphosa, the association recommends that the ministers responsible for water and sanitation, as well as environmental affairs, prioritize their respective hydrological and climate information systems, and also to ensure that adequate funding for the collection and maintenance of these data records is enough. I want to talk now to Mike Muller. He is a respected figure in this industry, former water DG, now adjunct professor at Fitz University. Mike, good afternoon to you. Prioritize respective hydrolo hydro hydrological and climate information and the system there too. What does that actually mean? What do they have to do? Sounds quite boring, doesn't it? Uh, but just think the day after the budget, uh, nothing that was announced in the budget can happen without water. How much water do we have? Where is it? How reliable is it? Do we have enough in storage in case there's a drought? And is it likely to be the same amount in 20 years' time as it is today? Uh, those are the kind of questions that the water managers always have to ask. And to ask it, they need information. And this information has to be measured on site, in rivers, uh, from dams. Sometimes, occasionally, we can do something from satellites. But uh, we have a very complex system to keep track of our water, and sometimes it's not properly maintained. And, in fact, there's, there are fewer gauges and stations operating today than there were 20 years ago. We're losing capacity rather than gaining capacity. Why do we find ourselves in this situation, then? You know, I, th I think that there are lots of priorities in life, and uh, getting water into people's houses is probably a very high priority. And so the question could be asked, you know, is it really important to spend money on fixing a measuring gauge that tells us how much water we're going to have in the, in the dam in the next uh, couple of months? But if you think about it, if that water in the dam is used up, um, you, the, the person in the house can have a tap and can have pipes but won't have any water coming out of it. So I think we've, we've lost sight of that longer-term job that the water managers have to do, which is to keep track of this precious resource, make sure we know how much it is, there is. And also, with climate change threatening, we've got to understand how climate change could affect the amount of water that we have available to use in all the different ways we use water. If we have a problem right now, in other words, not having the best information, is this currently a threat to water security? Well, you know, water security includes warning people that there's going to be a flood tomorrow. And I'm happy to say that if you look at the, what's happened, you know, particularly here in the Val in the Orange system, uh, people have received warnings a few days ahead of time to say, if you've got a pump in the river, you better lift it out because you'll lo it'll be washed away if you don't. We've also, I'm afraid, seen that in some places, bridges and roads have been built without adequate capacity for floods, and they've been washed away. So, uh, you know, if we, if we don't have this information, what we find is that infrastructure gets built that doesn't work very well, and people don't get warnings when they need them. And uh, those things impose costs on the economy. They cost mm. jobs, they cost money. Uh, they cost lives quite often. If you remember in 1995, Christmas 1995, 130 people died in Peter Maritzburg, as it then was, when a flash flood came down the valley. And there were warning systems in place. They didn't work as well as they should. 130 people mm -hmm. died. Um, we need to avoid those sort of short-term disasters, but just as important, how likely is it that there's going to be a drought in the Vaal system in the next 10 years? And do we have enough water stored to be able to deal with that? That's a question that we have to prepare answers to. For that, we need information. And that's why we're saying to the president, to the ministers of water, as well as the minister of environment, please, let's get the budgets and the people to do the work to keep these records in place. Because once you've lost the record, you can't go back and make it up. Uh, you, we really need the record to understand how things are changing and what we need to do to adapt to those changes. So better data so you can manage the interpretation. Is it a relatively easy problem to fix if you have the money? Look, it's an easy problem to fix, but it's 
kind of out of sight. You might go down when you're visiting the countryside somewhere, and you'll see a little weir, and there'll be a little sort of house on the side. Inside that house will be a gauge and a transmitter. Um, it's out of sight. And, you know, unless we actually remind people that these installations are important, it's quite easy to say, surely this, this other project is more important. Let's allocate the money to them. And what we're drawing attention to is that this has been going on for some time, not just in South Africa, I have to add, many parts of the world suffer the same problem. And what we end up with is less data, less information to guide what is becoming an increasingly complicated business. As we worry about climate change, we need to know if the changes we're seeing are kind of normal variability or if there's something bigger happening. And if it's something bigger happening, what do we need to, uh, to do to address it?